I'm Kate Conway and I play the viola de gamba in Ensemble Moliere. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about this instrument and I'm also going to play some music by the composer Maran Murray. So the name viola de gamba literally means bar for the leg as it's played upright. Unlike on a modern cello, there's no spike or anything for the instrument to rest on, so it just sits between your knees. One of the questions I'm often asked is whether it's difficult or tiring to hold, but it's actually extremely light, so I barely notice it's there. In fact, I can lift it up with one hand, and I'm not particularly strong. It's often assumed that the viola de gamba is a kind of modified cello, but it's actually part of a totally separate family of instruments, the viol family, whose ancestry is more similar to guitars or lutes, hence the frets. Viols were prevalent in the Renaissance and Baroque periods, and they have these distinctive C-shaped sound holes, as opposed to the F-shape of a cello or a violin. They come in a variety of sizes, but the most common are the treble, which is a small, almost violin-sized instrument, the tenor, which is more medium-sized, and the bass, like this one. They can be played in different combinations in viol consorts, as you can see in this picture from the mid-1600s. Viols can also be played in mixed ensembles with other instruments, such as the lineup in Ensemble Moliere. Viols usually have six strings, but Baroque basses such as this one can have seven to extend the lower register of the instrument down to a bottom A. The strings are made of animal cut. You can see that the top four are a slightly pale yellow colour because they're made of gut alone, whereas the bottom three are made of gut wound with silver. They're tuned in fourths for the most part, with a third in the middle. And this gives loads of possibilities for playing chords. The frets are also made of animal gut, and they're tied in a double format so that they can be split if the tuning requires. They also have to be replaced by hand every so often, which is not a particularly easy process. Files are played with an underhand bow hold, rather than overhand as with cellos or violins. And this means that the pressure placed on the string can be controlled directly using the middle finger. It also means that notes on the viol tend to have more of a lemon shape growing towards the middle. <laughs> rather than the more triangular shape of the overhand bowing on the cello, which has a stronger start, followed by a decay. The gamba can also take on many different roles due to its range and its setup. And I love the fact that I'm sometimes playing bass lines, sometimes melodies, and sometimes inner parts and chords. And in Ensemble Moliere concerts, I'm often switching roles between pieces or even within them, which certainly keeps me on my toes. When I first started playing, one of the things that I found most exciting about the gamba was the sheer scale of the repertoire written for it. It's a huge body of inventive and creative music, and much of it isn't so widely performed. Here's a little snippet by the composer Mara Murray, who was a virtuoso gamba player and also wrote five books of pieces for this instrument. I'm joined by the harpsichordist Satoko Doiluk.
Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, do get in touch with us via this YouTube page or on ensemblemoliere.com and we'll do our very best to answer them. Thank you.